Not yet to Uhuru, fellow South Africans. Not yet to Uhuru, fellow South Africans. To Melamba, to Africa. Molueni. Sani Bonani. Huemedach. Tobela. Abshini. Nda. Actioners to our wife, Koni Mashava, and our children who are joining us here today. And most importantly, you, my fellow South Africans, good afternoon. Today, today marks a historic moment for Action SA as we take another step closer to 29 May 2024. And the watershed election where our mission is to usher in a new era of hope and prosperity for the people of our beloved country, South Africa. Today, three and a half years after we launched under a global lockdown to an online only audience, Action SA is presenting our first national election manifesto to the people of South Africa. On 29 August 2020, millions of patriotic South Africans joined us in launching Action SA because they wanted credible, non-racial alternative to the failed political establishment. The manifesto we launched today gives us effect to the commitment we made to the people of our beloved country, South Africa. This manifesto is not a long list of populist promises and unrealistic commitments. It is a vision of what is possible under an ethical and competent government and forms a pragmatic an implementable plan to fix in South Africa by addressing the greatest challenges facing our people. As a successful businessman who built black like me at the height of apartheid, I have never believed in making promises that I cannot keep. But, but, but in taking action, to show people what is possible. That is why our manifesto is our action plan to build an inclusive, prosperous future for our country because only action will fix South Africa. And let me tell you, this year, action is possible in South Africa. Our plan will unlock millions of new jobs, safer communities, secured borders, access to quality education and healthcare for all. And for the first time, the inclusive empowerment of all previously disadvantaged South Africans, as well as those who have been hamstrung by three decades under an uncaring, unethical and unpatriotic government. Fellow South Africans, the problems we face are visible for all of us to see. Crime is spiraling out of control. Our ports are in chaos. Trains are not running. And unemployment inequality is on the rise. Despite false promises of a new dawn, life for most South Africans is more difficult than it was in 2018. When President Sir Ramaphosa sought to highlight the successes of his government by using the image of a citizen called Tintualo, he demonstrated just how out of touch the ruling party has become with lived experiences of the majority of South Africans. Yes, some progress was made in the initial period after 1994. But then the cans of corruption 
and cater deployment took root and the hopes and dreams of ordinary South Africans became a forgotten priority. I say this without fear of contradiction because joining us today are real Tinsualos who have not benefited from the false narrative, narrative Ramaphosa and the ruling party would like us to paint. As they have shared with members of the media at a press briefing yesterday, life for these Tinsualos is a daily struggle. As we commemorated Human Rights Day in Sharpeville on Thursday, we were reminded of how we failed to achieve the dreams of a democratic uh, de 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 democracy. Food and fuel prices have increased exponentially. There are more unemployed South Africans today than there were in 1994. Our education system has not kept up with our global peers, with fewer pupils being able to read for meaning than in 2018. Where we, where we gathered here today in the Johannesburg inner city, we are surrounded by hijacked buildings, rubbish piling up and robberies taking place in the light of day. Services are unreliable and load shedding and water shedding are becoming a way of life. Efficient public transport has all but collapsed and crime is spiraling out of control. It breaks my heart, it really does break my heart when I think that 84 South Africans are being murdered each day, each day as criminals no longer fear going to prison. We cannot carry on like this. I would like to invite these Tinsualos to stand up and greet the audience. Tinsualos, please stand up to him. We salute your bravery in standing against the ruling party's attempts to abuse your name to sell their lies. But I also want to tell you that on 29 May, the era of lies, broken promises, and failed government is going to come to an end. We can usher in an era of action that will move South Africa forward. Fellow South Africans, I don't want to dwell on our challenges as a nation any longer. We all know this too well. In February last year, I launched what are we called a South African dream. An action, is, action essays vision for an inclusive and prosperous future for all South Africans. Today, I want to share our plans to fix our greatest challenges and give effect to this South African dream. While there are countless challenges facing our people, I'd like to focus on five key areas that, as a leader of Action SA government, I would make my top priorities. Number one, within five years of government, we will launch programs that will result in the private sector creating over 4.8 million new real jobs. Number two, we will end load shedding within two years in government. This is something that should have been done a decade ago. Number three, we will ensure economic inclusive economic justice by implementing inclusive economic empowerment, a universal basic income stimulus, and a program of insourcing our people. Number four, we will restore the rule of law, stamp out corruption, and fight the scourge of drug abuse 
and gender-based violence. Number five, we will secure our borders and prioritize South African interests. by bringing an end to the inflow of illicit goods into our country while streamlining legal immigration. Fellow South Africans, please then allow me to elaborate on these plans to fix South Africa. Firstly, an action as a government will take action to implement programs which will lead to the private sector creating at least 4.8 million new jobs real jobs by 2029. South Africans are not lazy. South Africans want to work. But, but, job-killing economic policies and poor quality of education are holding us back from unlocking an employment revolution. An action as a government will seek an average of 5% economic growth over five years by supporting entrepreneurs, decreasing the cost of doing business, and re-establishing South Africa as a viable investment and business destination. We will invest in key industries with high potential job creation, such as green energy, mining, agriculture, and emerging technologies. We will reform labor laws and minimum wage legislation to make it easy for new businesses to hire new employees and dismiss non-performing ones. And we will transform South Africa's cities into inclusive economic centers by reclaiming hijacked buildings and unused factories for private sector mixed-use development. That includes affordable accommodation and rental opportunities for emerging businesses. This will directly start to address the legacy of apartheid special planning by providing housing opportunities close to job opportunities. Babelech Industrial Area and Harangua Industrial Park, where I launched Black Like Me in 1985, are examples of this. Once a hive of industry, today, this factory stand largely abandoned. We will reinvigorate these areas and unlock thousands of jobs by handing them over to emerging entrepreneurs to start manufacturing businesses. We will, we will incentivize businesses, both local and international, to invest in these abandoned industrial areas and create employment opportunities for our people here in South Africa. Central to fixing the economy is fixing our education system. We will fix our schools by breaking the power of unions over schools' appointments. And whether they like it or not, we will reintroduce schools inspectors to ensure that across South Africa, quality teaching takes place. We will invest in new universities and TVET colleges, reintroducing specialized training colleges such as teaching, policing, nursing, agriculture, and artisan skills like plumbing and electrical work. We will expand the lifelong skills development programs to ensure our people always have opportunities to gain additional skills through their careers. And 
we will ensure universal access to tertiary education funding by increasing the budgetary allocation to combat, combat the failed NEFSA system. Under Action SA, under Action SA, no academically qualifying student will be excluded from further education because they lack the funds to study. We will ensure that student funding will be a top priority ahead of any government expense. Fellow South Africans, our careful economic modeling has shown that these interventions, among others, I will outline later, will collectively create at least 4.8 million new and sustainable jobs by 2029. These measures will reduce unemployment to roughly 18%. This will not be a mere temporary work, opportunities celebrated by the ruling party, but sustainable jobs that provide reliable income and create a pathway out of poverty. <laughs> secondly, secondly, Action SA government will take action to permanently end load shedding within two years in government. Earlier this month, I uh, unveiled Action SA's nine-point plan to end load shedding, stabilize energy provision, and introduce competition into our electricity market alongside a streamlined ESCO. This will ensure that businesses are no longer harmed when they have to close their doors when the electricity is off. Under our plan, we will end nepotism at ESCOM to ensure that the entity is staffed with highly skilled employees who are appointed based on merit and competency, not political affiliation. We will combat crime in the energy system by declaring the stealing and vandalizing of public property such as electricity lines and substation as economic sabotage through legislation. We will shield critical services such as police stations, hospitals and schools from load shading to ensure that they can continue to deliver their services uninterrupted. In too many communities, crime spikes when load shedding occurs. And we, therefore, have to do more to protect our communities. Most importantly, we would decentralize the energy market and establish a competitive energy market to ensure that the private industry competes with ESCOM. We would furthermore transition South Africa using more renewable energy sources in our energy system to promote environmental sustainability while at the same time safeguarding communities reliant on the coal mining industry for survival. We will harness solar power by providing low-income houses with universal access to rooftop solar panels and solar-powered geysers. We will enhance critical skills development by introducing specialized training programs that focus on building the skills required to maintain South Africa's energy grid. Collectively, we believe these actions will permanently end load shading. In 17 years since load shading was first implemented in 2007, the ruling party has failed to end it, but an action is a government will end load shading within two years in government. Thirdly, an action, action SA government 
will take action to ensure economic inclusive and economic justice. We will implement inclusive economic and basic uh, a universal basic income stimulus and a program of insourcing. Action SA is unapologetic in our belief in the empowerment of black, colored, and Indian South Africans. As long as a correlation between race and access to opportunity exists, we cannot claim to have realized the promise of a free and equal South Africa. A keystone of an action SA government's policy will be the introduction of the Inclusive Economic Empowerment Act, or IEE as you like to call it, which includes the establishment of an, an opportunity fund, an alternative to a failed government policies that have worsened inequality and left tens and millions of our people still trapped in poverty. This opportunity fund will be used to invest in programs that will ensure equality of opportunity as opposed to equality of outcome. Instead of focusing on empowerment of tenderpreneurs and the politically connected few oligarchs, we will use the opportunity fund to invest in tertiary education funding, entrepreneurial stimulus, and infrastructure involved in investment in underserved communities. To address inequality, we must focus on the root cause, not just window dressing for the sake of compliance. That's why we will replace the compliant cost of existing employment legislation, estimated at between 4 and 6 percent of company profits within with the Opportunity Fund levy. This new levy and legislation will apply for 30 years. This bold step introduces a 5% company tax for all companies, excluding SMMEs, and is projected to raise about 55.7 billion rands in the first year and will grow in line with our annual growth of our country's economic performance. Additionally, we will expand social welfare by implementing a universal basic income stimulus, UBSI, in addition to increasing existing grants. The stimulus, which is linked to poverty bans, will initially be paid for a period of three years through monthly cash transfers consisting of 633 rents, 633 rents in the first year. 1,058 rents in the second year and 1,558 in the third year. We simply cannot be celebrating people being dependent on 350 or 370 rents a month. We are said that the success of an action as a government should be judged on how many people we manage to get off the social welfare system. However, we will continue to support those in need of social grants. <laughs> Furthermore, Action SA believes that outsourcing of core services by government departments and entities resulted in unfair and exploitative labor practices faced by workers. As I did as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg, Action SA will prioritize insourcing by ensuring that workers at all levels of government who are performing core functions of a permanent nature are made permanent employees subject to the necessary feasibility studies. We will also compel government departments to perform feasibility studies before outsourcing any functions. Instead, focus on building internal capacity as far as possible. <laughs> Fourthly, an action, a, action SA government will take action 
to restore the rule of law, stamp out corruption, and fight the scourge of drug abuse and gender-based violence. <laughs> Fellow South Africans, no country, no country can flourish and no economy can grow in a state of chaos. Tackling crime and violence in South Africa requires addressing the underlying socio-economic drivers of crime while ensuring that capable criminal justice system prosecute all offenders. Within the first year of taking over government, Action SA will professionalize the police and re-establish its independence by hiring career policemen over politicians to lead the service. We will launch a recruitment drive to expand the police force and implement strict physical condition requirements for entering the police service. We will cut the government's 3.7 billion rents budget for VIP protection and instead reallocate these funds towards crime prevention and visible policing. There is no need for extravagant blue light convoys when our communities feel unsafe. We will re-establish specialized policing units in murder, rape, drugs and financial crimes, which the ruling party disbanded to protect themselves and their cadres. Units like the Brixton Murder and Robbery Specialized Units which was highly effective in combating crime, will be brought back so that we can turn the tide on crime in South Africa. We will reform the penal code to ensure that bail is abolished for repeat offenders of serious crimes such as rape, drug syndicates and murder while reviewing minimum sentence guidelines. Under Action SA, under Action SA, a life in prison will mean a life in prison. And, and prisoners will be required to participate in prison work programs that focus on public works such as agriculture and maintenance. Prison will no longer be a holiday resort, but a place where prisoners repay, repay the debt to society they've harmed. We will recapacitate the NPA and establish specialized courts to deal with specific crime categories such as organized crime and corruption, to increase the efficiency of convictions and to improve accountability. Action SA will prioritize fight against substance abuse and drug trafficking. This evil in our society needs our utmost attention. I and many South Africans we have seen firsthand the damage it inflicts in our communities. Fellow South Africans, enough is enough. Yeah. Action SA will make fighting drug abuse a key focus of our government. We will treat addict, addiction as a medical uh, issue requiring treatment and support, while at the same time taking zero tolerance approach to drug dealers and drug traffickers. Action SA will intensify the illegality of, of narcotic trades while providing medical support and increase access to rehabilitation treatment to people suffering from substance abuse and addiction. As I did as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg, we will roll out substance abuse clinics countrywide to ensure that our communities 
get the help they need. We will not punish those who suffer from addiction, but criminally prosecute those engaged in the illicit narcotics trade. In addition to fighting crime and substance abuse, we will declare corruption as public enemy number one. Central to this, we will allocate a fixed percentage of the annual national budget towards our fight against corruption. This will ensure that officials and investigators tasked with combating corruption are sufficiently equipped and resourced to identify and prosecute corrupt acts and they do it effectively. Action SA will reintroduce the Scorpions which was highly successful in tackling high-profile corruption until it was disbanded for investigating Jacob Zuma's bribery allegations. Furthermore, we will amend the Constitution to introduce a permanent Chapter 9 anti-corruption institution to investigate and prosecute corruption cases. Fifthly, Action SA will secure our borders. Action SA will secure our borders to bring an end to illegal immigration and the inflow of illicit goods while streamlining illegal, I mean, legal immigration. We have always said that we want the people of the world to come to South Africa, but they must do so legally. And when they are here, they must avoid our laws. Just last year, traveling in Limpopo, I saw firsthand how this unpatriotic government has allowed the collapse of our country's borders. Fixing this issue starts with securing our porous borders. We remain unapologetic about our stance on this particular subject. We will stop the flow of illicit and counterfeit goods which endangers the life of our people, in particular our children. The inflow of illicit goods also hurts our economy. Furthermore, we will prioritize the fight against cross-border human trafficking. In addition to securing our borders, we will overhaul home affairs to clamp down on corruption and the issuing of fraudulent documentation. Under Action SA government, the printing of falsified identity documents will never be allowed. This practice will be treated as treason. Our policy on immigration will ensure that we streamline the process of legal immigration for those who qualify, especially those with scarce skills our economy and our country needs. We will make it easier to obtain visas and work permits for those wishing to enter our country legally. South Africa needs foreign uh, direct investments and critical skills to grow our economy. But we will not shy away from deporting undocumented criminals and those with no legitimate claim to asylum, refugee status or residency. We find it unacceptable being insulted by those who expect, expect us to be silenced where we highlight this crisis South Africa is facing. As I'm addressing you now, there's a woman somewhere in our country giving birth. Immediately upon delivery of a child, a birth certificate must be issued. Upon turning 16, all South African youth must apply for identity documents. 
Every time a person dies in our country, a death certificate must be issued. Why then are we insulted and expected to question foreign national not to comply with this obligation that South Africans are expected to respect? <laughs> Fellow South Africans, as previously mentioned, the plans we are presenting here today are pragmatic and implementable. Good plans without capacity and the political will to implement them amounts to nothing. That is why underpinning our plans is a roadmap to building a functioning civil service that will deliver with pride. From ending nepotism instead of base, uh, uh, basing appointments on merit to reprioritizing our budgets towards frontline services and infrastructure, we have given great thoughts to the foundation required to implement the plans I've laid out. As an action, as a government, we will be decisive to reduce the number of national government departments to approximately 20 and eliminate the, uh, all the positions of deputy ministers in all departments. No underperforming minister will be kept in place. And let me be clear, Action SA will take a zero tolerance approach to services delivery failures, especially in the case of municipal governance. Local government is, the, is at the call face of service delivery in our communities. And when they fail, that is where residents suffer the most. Where we govern provisional in, a, in any province, Action SA will therefore not hesitate, we will not hesitate to place them under administration. If local government leaders cannot deliver basic services, we take them over running of these municipalities. Further to this, we believe in a whole society approach to fixing South Africa. This must begin with advancing the value of family. Strong families in all their forms are at the core of a cohesive society. I've often spoken about how the support of my wife and family has carried me through the darkest times and saved me from myself. Earlier this month, earlier this month, I celebrated 42 years of marriage to Connie Mashaba. And and uh, to this day, I, believing, I believe marrying her was one of the best decisions I've ever made. <laughs> to conclude, my fellow South Africans, I want to say with utmost confidence that the plans we have outlined above will fundamentally improve the lives of our people. We will create a country we can all be proud to call home and, the, and turn the promise of the South African dream into a new South African reality. Hope, hope for South Africa is not lost. It is possible to live in a country where we reduce inequality, where everyone has access to opportunity, where our people are safe to live healthy lives. Together with Team Fix South Africa, of potential ministers we unveiled two weeks ago, Action SA believes we, with, with the skills and expertise necessary to fix South Africa and restore the country to a path of prosperity. We have from chartered accountants to engineers to disability activists Action SA 
has the necessary leadership, not just to join a coalition government, but to lead a multi-party government towards success. However, for change to okay in our country, it requires that we take action at the ballot box on the 29th of May, 2024. Change is not going to happen overnight. It will require the hard work of every South African, such as the thousands gathered here today, to go out and spread Action SA's message. Elections are not won through the media interviews and newspaper reports, but through the daily interaction with voters across our country. In the weeks ahead, we have to build on this momentum to bring hope to many people who have been let down by the political establishment. For us to fix South Africa, South Africa, it will require the courage and bravery to vote for something new and place our trust in a credible alternative to the failed political establishment. As I've said before, we cannot do the same thing and expect different outcomes. We cannot continue to vote for the same old political parties and expect change to occur. For us to build a better tomorrow, it will require that we vote for action on May the 29th. Why do you think we need to vote for action on the 29th of May 2024? Because only action will fix South Africa. I thank you.